<laughs> what was that? <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, wait a minute. That just showed up out of nowhere. I was like, that's really cool, though. I do have to give props to have all the really cool stuff. You're just getting this all from the comic shop, aren't you? Uh, yes. Yes, I am. Very... Very, very lucky. Everybody, and welcome to From Mother's Basement, the show that we celebrate being a geek. I'm Jason. And I am Michael, and you are seeing the reflection of my monitor in my glasses, so I'm going to take them off. Nah, it's all good. I don't have oh. the cool little spiffy Annie Claire filter you do. Ooh. Well, it's Mr. Not Hollywood. Really, it's not really clear. It's, it just becomes more purplish than anything else. So in, I'm messing in, with you. So in some states, they will probably throw me in jail for having those type of glasses, but you know. Indeed. As long as not, as long as it's smaller than five point five inches, you're fine. How you been, Michael? <laughs> I've been okay. Um, working, prepping for a show I'm teching later this month. Um, uh, it's, it's it's weird. We're gonna do we're gonna do show one hundred, and then Michael's gonna be gone for a show. It's gonna be interesting. Well, this is um, show ninety nine, and you're gonna be gone next week or the week after. Week after. Week after. So okay, cool. So we will we will have an episode next week. Awesome. Yes. We'll have an episode next week. Cool, cool. Um, and then I'm going to be gone for a week, and then I'll be back. And then I should be golden for pretty much the rest of the year, unless I get summoned for another gig. Which, um, you know, real life comes first, so. Well, yeah, pretty much. Yep. Um, but other than that, I've been doing good. How about yourself? Good, good. Just, uh, it's uh, much more comfortable at my my desk now, now that I spent the money on got it actually a decent office chair. Nice. So it's nice. now it's like, hey, look, I can sit comfortably at my desk for longer than 20 minutes. Hey, well, I can actually start playing all the video games I have been missing on. Oh, look, Jason's finally coming back to WoW. Yep. What do you mean you went monthly, you bastard? Um, yeah. <laughs> See, unfortunately, yeah. you're, going, you're getting into 14 just as I'm leaving it. Not because I want to, but because I can't afford two games. Mm. Or it's, 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 it's trying to save funds. So... Yeah, I do have to say it's, uh... Yeah, because there's WoW and, of course, Final Fantasy XIV. Um, what sucks is, yes, it did find my old character from before. The downside of it being, because it was on the Japanese server, they changed something around so my connection is so weak against those servers that I couldn't really play the character. And really? Because I was on a Jap Japanese server and um, it was on Aegis, right? Yeah. I try, yeah. I try to connect. I connect in, and I start wandering around, and everything was so blocky and staticky. That was a really bad connection. So I ended That's up weird. seeing how much it would cost to transfer to like a U.S. server, and it's like eighteen bucks. So I went. I'll just create a new character. Yeah, pretty much. I've got I've got a character on a U.S. server, um, mm. but most of my characters are on Aegis. Gotcha. And then of course it'll be more wowage in the very near future. Well, you have a guild that uh, you know would like to have you back, so. I, I, I miss the My Life for Taco runs, so. <laughs> well, especially when it's going to be My Life for Tacos as you try and get your cloak. You yes. want this cloak. Yeah, I, you, <laughs> I've been hearing this time and time again. I need to get this cloak, so. Yes. We will we will find time for it. And it's going to take you a couple weeks. but. Yeah, very true. Just like it's taking us a couple weeks to get to Comic-Con news. Ah, <laughs> blunt segue was blunt. I love it. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Um, well, the thing is, though, a lot of the, uh, the like the more minor announcements that came out of Comic Con has been disseminated so many times that that's true. We can just rehash the big stuff real quick and then move on to the, some of the latest stuff, including some really cool new tech. Um, yeah, and and then then we're gonna end up with a with the WTF. Moment. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's just talk about a couple of the uh, the bits from Comic Con. Um, uh, one of the bigger ones, at least for me was that Marvel uh, came out and announced that they are releasing three brand new Star Wars comics early next year. Um, these ones are going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Star Wars, Star Wars Darth Vader, and Star Wars Princess Leia. These all take place after the events of uh, Episode 4. Okay, there's a problem with that. Oh, uh, uh, after Ep 4. Yeah, after So they're going to replace the Dark Horse series? Apparently, I mean, remember Disney did that whole thing where we're going to take a chainsaw to the right. We're going to retcon the world, yeah. yeah. And then now, sl slowly since cherry owns pick Marvel, stuff are back these in. considered canon? Hmm. Since Disney owns Marvel, are these considered canon? They are considered canon. I hope they get good writers. Uh, we'll I really hope they get good writers. 
Well, it looks like uh, the Star Wars Darth Vader one is being written by Kieran Gillen, who worked on Young Adventures and Uncanny X-Men. Mm-hmm. The um, Princess Leia one is being written by Mark Wade, who worked on Daredevil and Kingdom Come. I really liked Kingdom Come. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. The Star Wars, the r- basic Star Wars one, uh, is being written by, really, Jason Aaron, who worked on Thor, God of Thunder, and more importantly, Original Sin. Original Sin still playing out. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, the Marvel's bringing some of their... their there are people over for this one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of set. Are, have what, they announced the artist yet? They did announce the artist. Uh, let's see for Star Wars, uh, John uh, Cassidy for from Astonishing X Men. Okay. For the Darth Vader one, it is by Salvador uh, Laraca, who worked on X Men. Okay. And the covers we done by Ad Granov, who worked on X Men and Amazing Spider Man. Okay. The Leia one. I know this name, Terry Dodson, who worked on right. Wonder Woman and Uncanny X-Men. That explains why she looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Just a skosh. <laughs> but yeah, so... Hey, at least Carrie Fisher can be happy. She's finally got a bra. <laughs> no, I was going to be a little meaner than that, but sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> well, no, you've heard about that story, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. But Carrie Fisher was pissed off. Yes. Yeah. Although I do have to say, well, no, I'll, I'll be nice. <laughs> yes. So having these three brand new storylines basically kill whatever we had before, which Disney uh, has already come out and stated that just because something's no longer ex- officially canon doesn't mean, uh, one, it shouldn't continue, or two, uh, it still can't be en- enjoyed. That's almost like a cop-out bit saying, we're going to do what we want, but you guys keep on playing and let yourselves think that it's still canon. Well, there's that too. Well, there's that option. There's also the whole... You know, they do this in comics all the time. Alternate universes, you know, mm-hmm. multiple Earths. It's, yes. DC is notorious for this. So... Yeah. I don't know. I, I think it'd be cool to read these and see where they're going to go with this. I'm curious. The thing is, having a, having a Darth Vader comic that takes place after the events of Episode Four. It's kind of limiting. I mean, okay, you've got a two, if I remember correctly, it's like a three year, two, two year, less than three year period between Ep4 and Ep5. Right. So they somehow got to wind this over and into, oh, look, we're going to go drop shit on Hoff and stomp on stuff. You know, it's. Unless they decide to turn around and do it. Do have it continued like after episode five, and then they really can't go beyond episode six because that's where you have like the Disney, the, the um, that was that new show, Rebels, Star Wars Rebels come in, and a bunch of other well, you stuff. got Rebels coming in. Also, you've got um, oh, no, 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 Rebels is Rebels was between it's supposed to be between uh, it's, it's pre Jedi. Oh, is it oh, okay? Yeah, my bad. So, I, I want to say Rebels was between three and five. Okay. It's like concurrent, um, if I remember correctly. But the the problem with, with doing that is, you know, you have to dovetail these in. On six, <laughs> unless you're going to have Darth Vader come back as, as, as when she, she mooned me or something, she photobombed me? Yes. Okay. Um, on episode, if you go after ep six, the only thing you can come back as is a ghost, a force ghost. Which is not unheard of. True. Just don't get freaking Hayden Christensen. <laughs> uh, and a side note on that, it was already rumored that, at least for one scene, that Vader's supposed to show up in Ep 7. And I'm like, okay, that has to be a flashback of some I'd say it would sort. have to be a flashback or a ghost. Uh, I, they they got to leave the ghost part alone. Oh, that shit we should. They've yes. already screwed that up horribly. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, like, just can't think, I just can't hear that and not think of that comic, you know? It's, you know what? They could always just... They've already screwed up with it so many times. Why don't they just um, continue with the, the ghost, but have it actually be... Um, uh, who was it that, that, that voiced Vader? James Earl Jones? Yeah, just have James Earl Jones up as a ghost for the fuck of it. <laughs> Totes my goats. Aww. <laughs> He's a real hottie. Just imagine Darth Vader saying that. 
<laughs> I do now. I didn't you want know what to. We're talking about there's a sprint commercial. Con there's a sprint campaign where they've got James Earl Jones and Malcolm McDowell reading people's tweets in you know their best dramatic form, <laughs> and hearing distinguished actor James Earl Jones say he's a real hottie broke me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why? I mean, at this point, why not bring bring James Earl Jones in here somewhere? Well, if they do a flashback, they kind of, if they do a flashback and the flashback has him in in the suit, kind of has to be James Earl Jones or somebody doing a really good impression. Uh, well, here's the thing, though: if if Vader is going to be a show up in seven for whatever flashback reason, it better be in the suit because I do not need another shot of whiny bitch, you know, Anakin. Yeah, pretty much. Plus, pretty that kid much. does not need, make, need to make any more money. <laughs> it only fuels his ego, and it's bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although I actually kind of like, I, I actually kind of like Jumper, but. <laughs> eh, okay. Yeah, they, got good to, point. they got to settle the fight. <laughs> good point. All right. It was it was Windu. It was Mace Windu versus Darth uh, versus uh, Vader. Two mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh well, I know we're gonna have a bunch more news from Star Wars in the very, uh, I think in the not too distant future. Yeah, Star Wars, uh, the Star Wars event. Well, D twenty three is gonna kick out a bunch of stuff. Yeah, but D twenty three is not till next year, I believe. They started selling tickets this year for D twenty three, which is I next. I thought D twenty three was later this year, but I could be wrong. Hmm. But oh, uh, and forty four, uh, forty fifth, forty fifth anniversary of Haunted Mansion. Happy birthday, Haunted Mansion. Hmm. I saw that uh, was it KTLA did a like a special thing with Disney where a winning family was actually spending a night in the haunted mansion. Yeah, they, I heard about that. They, I wanted to get in on that some kind of bad. Uh, and the thing is, they um, when I watched a little bit of, it of the uh, live stream, they actually had a bunch of cameras everywhere and whatnot. So they uh -huh. went on a on the ride, which had some extra people added to it. <laughs> so um, then they had like a dessert kind of thing in the entryway. And then they went down one of the elevators, and apparently the ele other elevator was actually turned into um, uh, what's called bedroom bedroom for them. Wow! And so they, I would have figured they just put them in the dream suite, but you know, yeah, it's... true. And they they were apparently visited by like the the hitchhiking ghost showed up. Um, nice. The the woman on the uh, the, the tightrope walker she showed up in full Tight outfit and whatnot. Walker. You remember one of the um, the stretching photos oh yeah. oh oh right 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 okay and a few other things and whatnot and i was like okay that's kind of cool it, it was annoying that they set up like a laptop and a chat room so they were just sitting there just talking to a screen i'm like i don't care about this do something you know interesting exactly like i would love to see them try to fall asleep and then flash the um the lightning and the guy hanging at the top There's just to watch the way. kids scream <laughs> stuff like that come on that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Oh well, and we get way off tangent. It's all good. But see, I'd be the, I'm I'm the kind of guy that would be I'm the kind of nerd that would be wanting to go check out the animatronics up close and personal. Oh jeez, could you imagine being able to like actually walk the ride? Yeah, well, and that was funny when I did the dream tour, the dream suite tour. Mm -hmm. I actually started. I I was the one asking tech questions. Like, <laughs> how do you do this? And that? I'm like, we don't have the. What are you talking about? This Disney magic. And I'm like. Oh fuck! Really? Okay, <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna play that game? Fine. It's Disney magic. I can see the servos, dude. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Why am I suddenly reminded of an a, a episode of The Simpsons where Lucy Lawless showed up, and they were asking a bunch of qu uh, questions at a panel, and she basically responded with, "Every time something doesn't make sense, a wizard did it." But in this episode, wizard. But in this episode, wizard. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Ah, <laughs> uh, all right. The only thing real in Disneyland are the ducks, or, or the only thing. Everything else is. I'm sorry. Everything's real. The only thing fake in Disneyland are the ducks. There you go. <laughs> that and E. coli in the rivers of America. <laughs> you really surprised? No, not at all. In the least. <laughs> Moving right along. Yeah, let, let, let's talk about actually Godzilla. <clears throat> Yay, Godzilla! Had a ton of fun with this movie. Saw multiple times oh, yeah. in theaters. Can't uh, wait for the Blu-ray. Oh, jeez, the Blu-ray, yeah. I would put it on par with Guardians of the Galaxy as the most fun I've had in theaters this year. Um, I I enjoyed Guardians of the Galaxy greatly. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's kind of apples and oranges. Um, yeah. 
and the amount of fun I actually had more fun in Godzilla. Okay. But that's not demeaning to Guardians at all. No, no, no. Because no, I not. had a freaking blast in Godzilla, and I had a really great time in, in Guardians as well. So. Mm -hmm. Um, the reason we're talking about it, it was announced at Comic-Con that Godzilla <clears throat> 2 was greenlit. Yes. And they released, or they showed a sizzle reel, um, just basically a teaser uh, video for the upcoming movie. Uh, hasn't shown up uh, on uh, official channels just yet, but um, it was stated that spliced into the footage were, uh, there was a claim that, quote-unquote, one secret remains hidden. And then there was images that went by real fast of... Uh, Rodan, Mothra, Ghidorah, um, a, a bunch of other people with the final phrase of let them fight. So I look at that so as... So it's going to be Destroy All Monsters. Could what, we have... it's going to be a remake of Destroy All Monsters. Oh, so good. I mean, this... Bring in the silver... Uh, bring in the silver aliens. Please bring in the silver aliens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, could you imagine how much fun this would be? I mean, having Godzilla alone... Uh, was an absolute blast. Take yeah. that action and then add the rest of the crew in. Well, yeah, I mean, you throw in Rodan and Ghidorah and Mothra, which means if you're throwing in Mothra, they're going to bring in the little tiny princess girls. Right, they're going to have to. Um, so it, it'll be interesting. I'm, I'm looking forward to see how they how they go with it. Uh, could be fun. I'm My not... only phrase is, let them fight. <laughs> and I, I say this every time we talk about one of these types of movies. Giant monster movies, giant robot movies work just fine in American theaters Make now. Freaking Ava! Thank you. <laughs> you knew exactly where I was going to with oh, this. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I really wanted to go talk to the guys at, at the Weta booth about that. The thing is, they're not the rights holders. No, so they're not they the rights holders. The but the they may actually have, uh, or know people who have access to the concept art that was released years ago. They have the concept art. It's their property. Right, but I'm saying those individual actual people there at who were at the booth. Because could you imagine if it, even if it never is never made, having a um, one of those concept arts actually posted the on concept, your wall. The concept art or the uh, the render of oh, the, the, of render. the bay. That's right. Of the Ava Bay. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, that was beautiful. Uh it has to be on someone's mind with all this stuff going on. Oh, yeah. Well, I know that when I talked to them at, at the Weta booth a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. I happened to catch one of the artists. And he was telling me about it. He's like, yeah, we really want to do it. Oh, my God, we want to do this. <laughs> but the rights holders just can't get to get it going. It's like, oh, crap. I mean, take, the, they take the fun and ferocity from Godzilla and Pacific Rim and throw in aliens and Avas. Oh. Win. Just win. Yeah, as long as you can keep Shinji from soliloquizing. Uh, have him pull a Deadpool. He has no mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Fox did it. <laughs> uh, All right, that was bad. I know. I bought some bananas. P a n a n a s. <laughs> oh, I really hope you know oh, whoever's sure, actually going to be backing this movie. That seriously, just green light <clears throat> it and go. Yeah, please. Just do this. We we want this movie. I do have to say, though, it's very interesting that when that came out, there was, of course, the, the big petition and everything for everyone to go out and, you know, demand that they make this movie. A, there was enough Deadpool bad... Oh, there was enough God. anger from fans about um, how Fox handled um, it, oh, and Wolverine Deadpool Origins. And, Wolverine, and Wolverine Origins yeah. that... There were several um, articles being written all over on f popular websites basically saying, we know you want this movie. Don't bitch about that thing because if you're actually happy and um, enthusiastic about a new Deadpool movie that's based around what, you know, what was leaked, uh, leaked, I should say, um, uh -huh. that'll get a much better response. Being positive has a better re response than bashing the, uh, the company that Let's all face it. Did a that has the rights at the moment. Yeah. yeah. So, it is what it is. <laughs> but, um, let's. Do you want to jump over seventeen? Go yeah, straight we, to twenty. Yeah, we could jump over that. So, so when I went and saw Guardians of the Galaxy, <clears throat> peppered in amongst the trailers was something I was not expecting, and that was the trailer for the new Big Hero Six. Mm -hmm. which is supposedly based on, inspired by whatever, the extremely retarded comic that Marvel put out a little while ago. 
mm -hmm. a couple of years ago called Big Hero 6. Oh my god, that that comic was lame. Decent artwork, but lame. <laughs> Watching, if, if, if the trailer you've got is... Do uh, you have this, the trailer up? Okay. If it's the trailer I think it is, they're missing a few characters. Um, I actually kind of want to see it. <laughs> I do. I, I, I'm with you on that. In the and, fact and there's a bit of a Pixar influence on that, too. If you look at the... It's like they're hybridizing the, the, the in-house studio and Pixar's design schema. And they're coming into a nice, happy medium there. Which I'm perfectly happy with. I'm cool with it. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm fine with it. Mm -hmm. Not sure what to make a balloon bot, though. Baymax? <sighs> yeah. Because that is not the character from the comic, even close. Not even close, no. Um, oh, the bit with the tape was funny. Yes. Uh, I think if they're going to reimagine that character, going for more of a comedy relief will probably work to their advantage in this situation. Um, they didn't really show any of the other characters from you know the title comic. Big Hero 6. Um, right. Their, Disney's already came out and released uh, screenshots of each of the, the other characters. Uh, Fr Frida, Wasabi, Gogo, -Go, Toma uh, Tomago. Um, there That's the character. Of all the characters, she was the one I liked. If it's, if it's who I think it is. Gogo -Go, uh, Tomago is actually, you know, the the fast, athletic one. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, she's in in this one. Uh, I guess we'll wait to the next trailer for them to actually showcase the other characters themselves. They're running out of time because it's coming out this year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do have to say though that, um. Out of all the characters that, and the designs they have for um, uh, this movie, one of the other heroes, um, she goes by Honey Lovin'. She definitely has a big uh, Rapunzel tangled um, feel to it. That is so not where I thought you were going to go with that statement. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, knowing you, well, you, know, to... you need to link us to uh, th those articles, dude. All right, well. <laughs> grab them real quick. I mean, let me do this one real quick. Here is what I was talking about. This is Honey Lemon. You can, oh, okay. you can see what I'm talking about. Um, yeah. Is that her in the background too? Out, yeah, of, out of costume? That's or? her out of costume. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah. Th th this is a total reimagining uh, re of this of this god awful um, comic. So yeah. in this sense, I think maybe Disney may be onto something, and for lack of a better phrase, improving upon the original. Potentially, mm -hmm. I mean, if they can make it actually somewhat enjoyable. Yeah. There's your semi stoner head, you know. Oh look, it's Shaggy. It. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, there's Gogo. -Go. Yeah, that's that's the character I thought it was. Okay. And then you have Wasabi. Uh huh. Which I find funny. It's voiced by um, Damon Wayans Jr. Damon Wayans Jr.? Jr., yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And then, of course, uh, Hiro in his suit. Nice. So. I gotta give him quality. I gotta give him, give him compliments on the quality of the character designs. I mean, as yeah. far as the models themselves, well, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Well, like you said, it's a nice blend of what Disney animation has done in the past and the Pixar, if you can call Pixar having a standard character style. Well, they know there's a distinctive style. Pixar has a distinctive style that mm -hmm. is is... I don't want to say unique. Well, it is pretty uniquely theirs, but I mean, you could look at a Pixar movie and go, or look at any one of the Pixar's characters and go, that's a Pixar character. Very true. Um, you could do the same with the Disney in-house studio. And I mean, they're all, the, they're, they're all the same big happy family anyway. And Lasseter technically is overseeing both of them, mm -hmm. but, but it's nice to see them start to hybridize that a bit. A bit. Yeah. Could work out well. I'm looking forward to it. I, I kind of I, I, I have to say, I am now. When that first initial trailer came out, and we were just like, no. Dear God, no. But this actually may work. I mean, it's not going to be like the end-all, be-all, but it actually may be enjoyable. So. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Unlike, well, kind of unlike what I saw this past weekend, which was uh, Teenage yeah. Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, I'll give my thoughts on it during the section of what, what we watch, uh, what we've been watching. But I do have to make an announcement that apparently 
it made enough money opening weekend, $65 million, which is, eh, okay, it's, it's good, but then again, Guardians of the Galaxy did $96 million, so... Mm. But, uh... Does it make its money back? That's that's the big thing, you know. It's it's it's, well, it's it, it, it has a ways to go for the sole fact that uh, Nickelodeon had to pay, I think, somewhere around fifty or sixty million just to get the rights back, and then double that for the production value for uh, 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 this movie. So they're gonna have to make some serious cash. Yeah, and and, and you gotta wonder how much money uh, Eastman and Laird are gonna make off of this. True, because it's their baby originally. Hmm. Um, but uh, like I said, I'll get to my review in a moment, but apparently it made enough money on opening weekend for, um, the studio to already announce that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 has already been greenlit and already has a set release date. It, that came by so quick. I mean, I'm sure they had this planned already, but so they may already be filming the damn thing for all we know. Uh, they're gonna kind of have to if they're if they're aiming for next uh, two years. Uh, yeah. June third, twenty sixteen, is what they're planning on. Um, I do have to say, yeah, I mean, there's enough there to merit a sequel, I think, or to uh, allow for a sequel, but um, it just don't have Will Arnett in it. Please don't have Will Arnett in it. Will Arnett. Yeah, uh, should I just do the review real quick? Sure, do the yeah. review. It's go, it's go fun. It, it 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 is fun. But dear God, from from step one to the final scene, it is. Even though he didn't direct it, this is like totally Michael Bay one on one. Complete with base explosions. Uh, a couple actually, yeah. Um, they rush through the um the origin story, which which I have to say. Did they back off of the alien thing? Yes. Yay. Okay, well, here's the thing, though. There are multiple origins um, for the Turtles. There's the original comic book version. There's the cartoon series back in the 90s. And there's also which, the, the live action movies back in the like 80s and 90s. Which were actually fairly consistent. They, were, they had some minor changes here they and there. They were all radioactive goo or, 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 or chemical goo dumped by this company. Right. That, that affected baby turtles. And Shredder escaped and taught them. They they changed a few other things, one especially the Shredder aspect for this movie. Right. Um, I'm sorry, Ma- Baby Splinter. My apologies, not Shredder. Okay. Um, I do have to say the graphics were nice. They were very nice. Uh, I saw a featurette on how they actually handled the the tech for them. It is actually very impressive. Um, instead of doing the usual, you have to be in a mocap in a, in a suit in like a, a closed environment. They were in, you know, on the sets in this giant, giant elaborate outfit. Uh, they had designs on each of them, so the computers knew exactly which character was which. Mm-hmm. So they basically just shot each scene twice, kind of. You know, your background screen, and then, of course, your regular shot with them in, um, in scene. Mm-hmm. And then they had two HD cameras on their faces to grab every single aspect of, you know... Uh, muscle structure, uh, eye twitch, ex- anything. That's all transferred so over to So it's kind of like what they did with with, uh, with Kevin Bridges and Tron. True. It's just and a little, little higher definition. The The cameras they used for um, for Tron Legacy were only SD. These were dual HD. Okay. So a little better, uh, better but resolution. But they had like six of them on Kevin. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> yes. Um, it is a nonstop ride. Like literally once you get to around the halfway mark. Okay. There's this scene that's, it's in the trailer, so it's not really a spoiler. Of uh, the gist of it is, the turtles need to get back to the the town. Apparently, they're on a mountain, and they're r- riding on top of a semi, which gets attacked and eventually starts going down uh, the side of a mountain, causing an avalanche while they're slip sliding everywhere in the snow. That scene goes for 20 minutes. Seriously? Seriously. 20 minutes of an avalanche. 20 minutes of an avalanche and fight scene and whatnot. And oh, God. The thing is, though, it's so Michael Bay-ish that you enjoy it. It's ridiculous. Okay. It's over I mean, the I, top. I've enjoyed Michael Bay movies. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed the Transformers movies. I just had to turn off my brain. I just had to turn off the fan, the, 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 the part of me... That, that wanted to actually compare it to the originals. So, and that's what you're going to have to do with this one. 
Okay. If you go in with zero expectations, you know, kind of knowing what it is, and you you enjoy it for what it is, you're gonna have an absolute blast. Is Casey Jones in it? No. Damn. Casey Jones is not in I it. I loved Casey Jones. Um, there was one aspect that I really didn't like. Mm. It was the fact that they kept on bashing over and over again um, all the in-jokes, trying to make jokes of itself of, please, that they're not from, um, uh, they're not from uh, space, they're not aliens. No, but they're turtles, and they're teenagers, and they're mutants, and also they're ninjas. Like, they keep on referencing this over and over again, try to bash you over the head in case you haven't forgotten five minutes ago. Jeez. This is all in the dialogue. Wow. So, that and, like I said, Will Arnett was probably the worst part of the entire movie. It, it's was- too, it, he's basically just one of April O'Neil's um, uh, co-workers that really likes okay. her. And he spends two hours really badly hitting on her. I mean, thankfully that part goes nowhere, but the fact that it goes on for the entirety of the movie, it got really annoying. Why don't you go turtle? (laughs) I'm sorry. That's not too far away from a a scene in the movie. (laughs) I'm not surprised. I am not surprised at all. But to give it an example of the the sense of the, uh, the comedy that you can get from this movie, they actually released... Uh, a clip um, that I'm actually going to show. It's like only like a minute long. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> so, that being said, and watching that, go in, head blank, and you'll enjoy it. Okay. <laughs> There's no way in hell I'm going to be able to get Nikki to go with me. Yeah. <laughs> Just rent it when it comes out on Blu ray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Should we talk cool tech? Yeah, let's talk cool tech because I really, really want this tech. Like, this thing is amazing. So, there is a startup in San Francisco. Not surprising. They're <laughs> called Navd. They, um, <clears throat> excuse me, started working on a new way to interact with your navigational system. Have you ever wanted to turn your car into a fighter jet? And a lot of people have tried this in the past. Hell, I know Pioneer had one a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah, but Pioneer's was like a grand. True, true. But uh, with this one, though, I do like this. This is just like their company namesake. It's called the Navdi. Um, What this thing does is essentially put a really nice heads-up display. Heads-up display. I'm actually all for this. Um, so it uh, sits on your car's dashboard, displays information from your smartphone, and if it connects to your uh, car's uh, OBD2 port, uh, on a 5.1-inch wide glass display. Um, i got to say, the price for something like this is not bad at all. For $4.99. No, that actually surprised me. I, I Once I, re- I read the article about it, and I was, I was checking it out, and I'm going, eh, hey, this would be pretty spiffy. I wouldn't mind putting one of these in my truck. And then, But, you know, I don't have that kind of money. And then I look at the price, and I'm like going, okay, I still don't have that kind of money, but I'm a lot closer to having that kind of money. Yeah, <laughs> you know? true. I could save up for a couple months and get that, but it's, it's, I, hope it comes to, I hope it comes to fruition. I really do, too. I mean... Aside from the bits of sensors that it has, it also connects to your phone via Bluetooth. It has Wi-Fi transmitters. It has a camera built into it, so you can actually do um, gesture and voice commands to this thing. So I'm. It's kind of dangerous if you're driving in LA traffic or San Francisco traffic at rush hour. Oh my uh, god! I thought yeah. LA was bad. <laughs> that that is yeah. What 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 does it say when that machine when you activate that machine that you didn't know what it did? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here's the thing, though. You mentioned about the whole texting thing. Because it connects to your uh, your smartphone, uh, either Android or Apple, technically that means you can dictate a response back to it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So are people enough of a multitasker to be able to do that? It I mean, depends on the length of the text. I mean, if you're like me and you send, you know, minor pamphlets as texts... <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, maybe not. I tend to send rather wordy texts. Yeah. <laughs> because I refuse to ab- abbreviate 98% of what I send. <sighs> <laughs> hey, dog, why are you do? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, dog, I heard you like text. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, I think it could be really cool, though. Yeah. I mean, I, I do like the fact that with that camera... Keep that can only be used outside of the window. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I do like that with the camera I mentioned is actually infrared. So it actually, mm-hmm. to control it, you don't even have to take your hands off the wheel. It actually recognizes your thumb, giving thumbs up or thumbs down. That's pretty spiffy. That's and actually if, it, if it'll trans if it'll translate the voice command because depending on the phone you've got Siri's if you're on an iPhone Siri's got some pretty decent voice command stuff if you're on an Android you can do even more mm-hmm. Dep- if you're if you're on a late model Android I should say because mm. um, like I know my Sony I can it's amazing what I've got in that thing to do <sighs> here's the only drawback I have to it is the size of the screen I mean you can do a lot more with a much larger space and it still would not be um, blocking your view all that much the only downside as to why it's only 5.1 inches is because that's the legal maximum limit that california allows 5.5 5. 5. 5 is, 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 is it 5.5 5.5 uh, okay but and it makes but at the same time that makes sense though mm-hmm. i mean it's you don't want it above you know because your main eye line you want it to be down here right because that's because most of what you're obscuring at that point isn't road True. You're obscuring your hood, depending I, on the car you're driving. I wonder how well it'll deal with like glare from other cars or whatnot. I mean, there's got to be some drawbacks well, to this setup. It's a, it's a see-through screen, so obviously you're gonna have some of that. I mm-hmm. mean, if you're going, especially at night, it's got potential. And my an my question is, because I know this is gonna be a legal issue, it's gonna pop up eventually. What is gonna be the difference between someone using this in their car as opposed to something like Google Glass? Because essentially they're the same thing at that at this point. They are the thing with Google, uh, and, and that's an argument that's already come up. Mm. Um, and, and I'm and I'm sure they'll. It's gonna. We're gonna have to wait and see how the law goes on that, um, because there are people who are trying to fight Google Glass being used in cars at all, because you have to. Un, the, I think this one might have a better chance because with this one, all you have to do is look down slightly. Right. Whereas Google Glass, you have to go up over here. I mean, your mm. head doesn't necessarily. You're True. looking up over here instead of directly ahead when you're driving. You miss a lot more crap here, whereas mm. if you go down still got a lot of visual gotcha that's my guess i'm it's my hope <laughs> you know? i mean in either case I still oh by the way speaking of google glass sorry minor mm-hmm. side tangent go for it remember the company that was making the tony stark glasses yeah apparently i'm on their mailing list are you <laughs> yeah they released an update and there's a dev kit out now oh yeah what's the price uh the dev kit is around a grand better the than the three and a half units, grand the, the, the final units are going to be about three and a half. 3,200 is what I last saw. But they're sporty see, as hell. They, I want they them. are. I it's, want them. Oh, oh my I God, do. do I want them? I want them as well. And it, it, the crazy thing about it is that we're looking at three and a half grand for the finalized version. Five years ago, that would have been close to three to five times tw- uh, that. Well, yeah. And by the time it actually comes out, that cost may drop. You know, the cost of the, cost of the high-res screens... I just want the ability to walk around and go, and then, <laughs> yeah, be able to do that, or, or you know, have, you know, the whole ARG thing going oh, in, in in real time. They, so they tried cool. to do a version of it in the Sony thing, and I'm kind of not sure how I like it. Mm-hmm. I'll show you next time you come up. But... Okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Back to this thing. It's a cool idea. It it's a very a... cool idea, and if it ties into, you know, it's effectively, yeah, it's a competitor for glass. But it's a competitor for glass that I think is safer. True. And it's definitely going to be a lot cheaper than all the current options that handle uh, similar designs from like Mazda and Ford. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. And the ones from Mazda and Ford are built in. Mm-hmm. So, but, uh, but they start at like a grand for, for an add-on. Minimum, option. yeah. Yeah, it's at least a grand. Something like this, I have no problem putting that on my dashboard. Yeah. No, oh, I... I've got room on my truck. I'll take it. Yeah. So, like I said, it's uh, available for pre-order right now for $499. And they're initially slated to be released um, early next year. So we'll see what happens with that. Yep. Uh, you know, let's move to 38 and 41. 38. Oh, heaven. Okay, yeah, definitely 38. Yeah. We can go for moderately quick. 41, that's our WTF. We have to do yeah. that. So <laughs> one of the, the, the things that we saw uh, at Comic-Con was the ginormous amount of figures that we really want from a sideshow collectibles. Oh god, sideshow. You can yeah, just take my entire paycheck, my entire annual income and mm-hmm. give it to sideshow. Um one of those being 
uh, from Guardians of the Galaxy. They they showed this one there, and mm-hmm. now it's available for pre-order right now. Uh, of Rocket and Groot. It looks really nice. You can pre-order only one per person. It's a little on the pricey side because they're $360 for the pair. Which, is, that's actually a good price considering they're, it's a premium format figures. And that's, the premium format figures are the size like Nikki got with uh-huh. her uh, Baroness statue. Uh-huh. And her Storm Shadow. Uh-huh. Which... That's <laughs> about, that's the size we're talking. We're talking, you know, a 20-inch statue here. hmm Which, I did to say on a side note, Michael, did you enter their contest when you were there? Hell yeah! So you got one of these, right? Yeah. Good. It only knocks off 25, though. But still, yeah, for those of you who are wondering, they had a contest there. You can win a life-size um, Han Solo and Carbonite. Um, and I would, you, if I got that, I don't know where the hell I'd put it, but I would You so would find a place that. for that thing, I would yeah. find room for that. But uh, it w- I, I might make it a coffee table. You know? <laughs> That'd be cool. Put a little glass over it. And then... Put, put, a, put a, a spinning glass so it doesn't crush its fingers. And... <laughs> That'd be epic. <laughs> oh, that be totally epic. But just for entering... Kind of tacky, was, but epic. <laughs> just for entering, which was free, you could actually get a $25 gift card to Sideshow. So. Yeah, but when you consider the figures in question to average over 100 bucks. Uh, it's not. I mean, it's it's it, every little bit helps. Okay, but uh, you know, true. for like that rocket thing, that's you're still paying over three hundred bucks. Yeah, I mean, it's really nicely detailed. It, it's sideshow collectibles one on one. You know, really good quality of it. Did you um, hear they're releasing an art book? Are they? Yes, the tw- um, I got an email about it. It's twenty hour. Or it's twenty years of sideshow collectible art. Um, and the the the, the I don't I didn't. I don't remember how much the book was, but it basically covers the first 20 years of Sideshow Collectibles and all of their concept arts. Oh, that's For pieces nice. they've done. It's tempting. Epic. That's tempting as all hell. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so you can buy these uh, figures separate or you can buy them in this combo pack. I highly recommend buying the combo pack if you really want to. Oh, wait, those aren't it. premium format. Those are posable. They say, yeah, they are posable. They're calling them premium. Well, they're premium format, but they're not the size-wise. These aren't going to be the 20-inch figures. No, 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 no. <laughs> these are a little, little smaller than that, yeah. But the thing is, if you buy them as a combo pack, you see a little design in the upper right-hand corner there? Yeah. Bonus accessory includes a potted Groot. <laughs> I want this just for the potted Groot. Yeah, yeah. And I do have to laugh because um, on Sideshow's uh, blog, when they announced this, Every single comment, which now I think has got to be close to a thousand comments, if not more. Involved the pot? All about, I just want the potted Groot. (laughs) (laughs) Screw the rest of it. Give me the baby Groot. (laughs) (laughs) The baby dancing Groot, yes. Well, you remember those obnoxious toys from, or those obnoxious dancing flower things from the 90s? I do, yeah. 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 This, if this doesn't resurrect, somebody's going to resurrect that. They have to, yeah. I mean, and, and just make the arms dance. I, you know it's going to happen. It's a matter of time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, That's on. the first thing that came to my head when I saw the baby group pop on screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, somebody's going to make money resurrecting those things. <laughs> <sighs> uh, okay. And before we get to uh, our usual wrap-up, we do have something that really just hurts our heads. So apparently there was a a, a low thread on 4chan a while back uh, pondering the nature of art. What is art? Anymore, yeah. Yeah. And so someone actually created a post, I'll take a screenshot of this, that says, Art used to be something to cherish. Now literally anything could be art. This post is art. This picture is a screenshot. Someone just took a, a snapshot of their, or uh, used their camera to take a snapshot of it. And then promptly put it for sale on eBay as art. Yep. Uh, they use the, um, the store name Artwork by Anonymous. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so basically, art used to be something to cherish, and now it's reduced to a post on 4chan. Get this, though. Not only... Did, did someone bid on this? But it sold for over ninety thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. Look, I get that the statement's profound, because it is realistically. I mean, it's 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 a fa- if you're if you're into, if you know anything about art appreciation, yeah, that's a fairly deep statement. But ninety grand, mm-hmm. really? Yeah. 
I am in the wrong freaking business. I am. <laughs> when I could have made something that literally took probably 10 seconds to write and post, went for 90 grand, and it's a really bad screenshot, too, complete with the flash yeah, and the glare. Even, it's not even a decent screen. You know, yeah. You'd have been better off getting a screen print. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Here's the, here's the even worse bit about this. Who bought it? No, no, no. It's not even that. Someone decided to take this another step further and took a, a screenshot of the eBay listing for this artwork and sold that as art on eBay. At last glance, that was going for $50,000. There are people in the world that have way too much money. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's also entirely possible that some of that may be inflated because after all, this is the weekend of DEF CON. Yeah, true. Very true. And there's a lot of cool <laughs> stuff coming out of DEF CON, like the whole bit of the firmware on every single USB key. That's just the firmware itself can be uh, hacked and exploited. So even before, awesome. not even talking about the data on the uh, the chip, uh, on, it's stored on the chip. It's just the firmware itself can unleash God knows what on your system. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, there's some really cool stuff coming out. Although that brings up, I know we're jumping around a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, the whole the whole thing about DefCon and what happened to come out this this year or this time is the uh, was it the 1.5 billion passwords and oh, from logins the Russian group? that the, this Russian group supposedly pulled down. Right now, and they're not sure if it was a political statement or if it was an actual. They say it was a group in Russia, and the thing is that 1.5 billion wasn't for wasn't from just a single website. No, it, it, was was, a, it was a combined yeah. number of websites: 400,000 mm -hmm. here, 200,000 here. But still, overall, and they refused to announce which ones it was because of this. Of, uh, that's the weird part about it, because usually when there's a big announcement like this, there's usually corporate names that follow. None. But give, well, given yeah, but when you think about it, that makes sense. I mean, these companies have the, the the company that announced it has NDAs with all these companies, true, all of its clients, which tells me maybe they're the ones that got hacked, <laughs> not their clients. Um, just wondering, you know, yeah, one of those things. Um, I can tell you that the company I work for was not one of them. <laughs> um, Citrix was not one of the hits, mm -hmm. um, but. It, all these people are like running around screaming the sky is falling, the sky is falling, the sky is falling yeah, it sucks that this happened but welcome to the modern age this is why you need to go through periodically and change out your passwords this is why you need to go through and make sure that your passwords are not simple to guess oh, but Michael sex, having money, his, power, having god, simple, password, yeah. admin yeah, exactly <laughs> You know, just be, you know, if someone hacks in and gets it, all my complex passwords are no good. Well, fine, then you don't use the same password on every freaking site. I mean, there's entire articles, there's entire books mm -hmm. dedicated to this subject. True. <sighs> and I'm sure uh, over this week, I'll I'll start going through all the uh, announcements that came out of both Black Hat and DEF CON. We'll we'll talk about it a little oh, bit. Oh yeah, next week. um, there's a I've got a possible. In fact, you have the same source. Um, a possible source on all the footage. Mm -hmm. Well, DevCon usually wait. posts uh, the majority of the talks, if not all of them, uh, on their website later on. Yeah, but plus I all the music it. too. It's always epic DJ spinning. So. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. So yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff. Mm. All right. Well, as uh, we begin to wrap up, Michael, what have you been watching? I decided to get around to catching up on Makaku City Actors. <laughs> when I wasn't playing Secret World, you need to get into this damn game, Jason. I'm serious. I know. You need to get into this game. Um, it's it's it's. <laughs> I wow. just got back into MMO. Let me let me get ease back into it. You will love this game. Trust me. Mm. Um. Anyway, aside from when I'm not doing that or working. Um, I decided to catch up on Makaku City Actors, and I made it almost all the way to current. Um, I think I'm on Ep 9. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. This is going to... You may need to bleep this or something, but, you know, this is... Fucked up anime is fucked up. I'm... And yes. it, it started out kind of cool, kind of going, and now I'm watching all... And the bits that are really screwed up is... I mean, there's really screwed up stuff going in the... Uh, uh, in the main storyline, but in the little 30 second vignettes after the credits that tell the story of the monster. Yeah. And 
and now they've tied that into what's going on in the story mm-hmm. because of, of, of the one character. And I still like it. I'm still going to watch the rest of it. But oh, man. Especially the one I left off on. The ending of that, of that episode was <laughs> just completely what the hell? How yeah. cruel can you be? Mm-hmm. You know? Um, another thing I've been watching is Rail Wars. That I, I'm watching. I'm, it's fun. It's... I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm kind of surprised. It's got a slight harem anime twitch to it, but not in the sense of any other harem anime I've seen. It's yeah. just all the characters really like this one guy. Mm-hmm. But it's not like they're fighting each other for him or anything like that yet. No, y- yet. One thing that did kind of bother me about it, though, hmm. most anime series wait till about ep 10 or ep 11 to do their obligatory swimsuit issue. Oh, no, they wait early on this one. Dude, episode four. I mean, <laughs> and boom, hello. <laughs> let's show all the characters. Let's show back shots of all the characters so you get butt shots. You mm-hmm. get everything but nipplage in these things. I'm just like going, wow, fan service much? Are you guys really that scared? They didn't need to do it because it's got decent storylines. Mm-hmm. It's got decent writing. It's got great artwork. Mm-hmm. I'm just kind of shocked that they did that that early on. You know, that they felt they had to, I mean. Well, let's face it, what this thing is. Since it's that early, it's not like they even had a chance to get the, to get the, the results of the first couple screenings at the rate these things are produced. Mm-hmm. So did, they, did somebody not have enough faith in their storylines? It's more along the lines of is that the manga is popular enough that. Where they, is that in the storyline in the manga? How far along in the manga is that? I'm not uh, not quite aware of. But the thing that is, being said, I thoroughly enjoyed the beach episode. Don't get me wrong, mm. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm. But uh, why? <laughs> yeah, who knows? But it's a fun show. It really is. It's a great show. It is a fun um, show. Sword Art Online. I'm a couple behind on. Um, last one I left off with was when they revealed when they did the when they basically did the origin story on Shion's player. Mm-hmm. Which, what the which, hell? Yeah, I, I, now I've seen that episode, I, I agree with everything Nikki said about that. Because her reasons for playing this game are ridiculously weak. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, it's, it's the, the, Beyond weak, they're horribly flawed. Mm-hmm. It's, it, <sighs> but then again, it's not going to be about this character that much. It's going to be about... No, actually, this character, from everything I've been seeing... She's going to be second to Kira, though. Well, in the, in the terms of the, when they're online in the world, but they're not going to focus too much on her backstory, you don't think. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. It's, it's, I know that they've, they're have they releasing the, 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 the short novels, and mm. they've been approved to go further. That's all I know. And right. I'm enjoying it. I, I like it. I just like, what the? F- yeah. Ah! Yeah. No, I... You know, there's something that... that, that I still like the show. I'll still watch the show. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm still gonna watch. I'm gonna watch Rail Wars. I love it. Um, I'm really. I'm gonna. I'm gonna finish out Makaku City, although it's really screwed up. God, poor <laughs> NA. I feel so sorry for NA. Mm. Um, I just want to see where it goes. Yeah. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for uh, Haruka's introduction. Ah, yes, yeah, that's. Gonna I figure that's in the next couple episodes. But I'm 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 they've they've set it up. Mm-hmm. They've just laid it out, and it's just like okay, I want to see how this comes to fruition. Yeah, it's gonna have to happen soon. It, no, it hasn't happened yet. Not that I've seen so far. And I hasn't seen him yet. I'm gonna be quiet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I've just been watching some. I've been watching a lot, a lot of Doctor Who. Um, watching uh, some anime when I can. Um, it's sort of online. Michael, I think you would actually really like A Comic Got Kill. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, check it out when you get a chance. Okay. Um, I'm also catching up on The Irregular at Magic High School, which I know many people dropped, but for some reason I kept going on it. So, mm-hmm. And it's almost like literally just one of those that I watch because, well, I've already watched this much. I might as well finish off the rest. Is it, is it, is it, oh, is it, does it get better like Move Love did, or? 
Because there's, lo- there's a lot was better. It was decent for a start, then it was crap, and then it got really good once you hit at 10. Right, and it took a lot of pushing from you for me to actually go back to it, and I'm kind of glad you did. Yeah. Um, I will say kind of similar with this one, at least in terms okay. of the action. Uh, gets a lot better. They start getting a little more into the conspiracy aspects of it, which works for me. Um, but it's not really like a solid must watch, but I'm already this far in. Why the hell not? What's up with season three of, um, psychopath or season two? Um, in production right now, uh, right now, uh, season one is being, um, re-edited and shown in, uh, with some additional scenes on, um, in, uh, in Japan and Funimation is actually streaming them as well. Okay. Um, once that's done, the season two starts at the end of season two, there's a movie. So okay. I'm guessing by winter, by fall or winter, we'll have season two. Now, when are we going to get the next freaking ghost in the shell? <sighs> uh, well, pre-orders for episode three are available. Episode I haven't seen episode two yet. I'm I didn't sorry, know they epi- released sorry, it. Sorry, episode two. Okay. Yeah, episode three just w- was just recently shown in... Um, Japan. Japan, and they already, because of that, subsequently showed a trailer for the final episode. And I'm like, damn it! Um, I know Funimation at Otakon this weekend made the announcement of the, the voice cast list. Surprisingly, Mary Elizabeth McGuinn is not Multico. Oh, that's kind of sad. But she's in oh, it, though. Oh, what? Yeah, she voices another character. Really? Yeah. Well, well, this is supposed to be this is supposed to be the start of Section Nine. So true. It would be a younger Matoko, although it kind of doesn't matter considering what she is. But mm. uh, I, haven't, I, I want I have uh, I need to find up too. <laughs> yeah. Me, me too. Um, I do have to say though, two other things real quick from Funimation um, from Otakon that you'll like. Uh, one, Funimation relicensed um, uh, the Hadahi series. Season one, season two, movies, everything. I, I one of these days I'll sit down and watch the rest of it. Um, so you, you'll always... have a, you'll have a chance now because they'll you'll re-release it on Blu-ray. Okay. But they announced finally announced the release date for um, uh, the Cowboy Bebop on Blu-ray. Oh, the series. The series on Blu-ray in its entirety. Really. This December. Because this is a series that wasn't done in HD originally. No, it was not. So are they going back and remastering it, or what? They didn't really state in this one. So oh. all I know is that earlier on this year, a uh, Blu-ray version was remastered and thrown out over in Japan. Um, mm-hmm. So now Funimation... Oh, well, the, the blue, if they remastered it in Japan, then... Yeah, okay. that's why we're getting it now. We'll get it uh, this December. The okay, so it's, but it's been it, remastered, which being, is the important Being part. remastered, the downside to this is that there's a regular DVD version, a regular Blu-ray version, and then... The um, combo pack? The, no, there's two premium packs. One specifically for Funimation's website, and one specifically if you pre-order it through Amazon. Both will have different art and different bonuses, which pisses me off. Oh, I hate it when they do shit like that. Okay. Yeah. So I'll get some more details on it. I'll probably throw on an break or something like that. But I figure that's something you would actually appreciate. Yeah. Hey, Prinny, if they're running Card Capture Soccer on Crunchyroll, which will be nice, are they going to run it unedited? Are we actually going? Are they actually going to run Ep Four? Good question. Because they did. You say, know the Ep I'm talking about. I know exactly which Ep you're talking about. And given the fact they announced it, they're going to stream both sub and dub. I don't know if they are going to. Well, card captors, they, when they really showed it on Channel 5, they changed, a, or KTLA, WB, whatever. Yeah. Um, they changed a lot. They had to clean up a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. And the, but you could still get the originals on the on the DVD set. Right. So. Eh, we'll see. I don't know. That 4 was funny, though. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was my favorite episode, just, cause, just to watch Carol get drunk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was, yes. it was awesome. Ah. Uh. Good times. All right, everybody. I think it's going to wrap it up for this episode. What do you yes. think, Michael? Yes, we need so. to. I need to go. Gotcha. Food. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out as always. Uh, stay tuned for post show. It'll be a bit on the short side this week. Um, we will be back next week for the 100th episode of From My Mother's Basement. Will there so. be alcohol involved? Why not? It's the 100th episode. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> it's 100 episodes. We're going to self destruct. <laughs> Why not? Hollywood could do it. Hey. So can we. And then we'll remaster. <laughs> Come out on Blu-ray. Oh, speaking of which, that's the other thing I've been watching, Ruby. I haven't seen season two yet. Uh, there are three episodes up on Crunchyroll. I'll check it out. Yeah, it, it's... 
the first episode, it, it's disjointed. It's disjointed. It's Ruby. Um, it's going to be disjointed. There's, there's a group. Well, there's a group of. There's a block of time that's not there. I mean, you talk about it in post show. The, it jumps to the start <laughs> of the second second semester. Okay. The food fight is epic, though. Trust me. Mm. You want to see the food fight. All right. All right, everybody. For For Our Mother's Basement, I'm Jason. And I am Michael. We'll see you guys next week. Take it easy, everybody. <laughs>